Today, I'm gonna test out these four types of drawing materials to see which one is the best. I wanna help you figure out the best materials to carry around in your bag whenever you wanna sketch. I'm gonna be filling a page in my sketchbook with each of the materials that are laid out in front of me. Each of these drawings are gonna include a portrait, graffiti, and some other naturalistic subject matter, whether that be an animal or a plant. So let's get to it. We're gonna start off with good old graphite. This one's pretty standard, especially if you're a student, you'll always have this around. I should be recording on the other side. I definitely recommend mechanical pencils because you don't have to sharpen these and these also last a pretty good amount of time. In my opinion, the plastic is also more comfortable and they also come with a little clip so you could just clip it to your sketchbook and you don't lose it as often. Some of the pros are it's very convenient to just carry around because it also has the eraser on the end. The blending is really nice and you get really soft lines, especially if you use a lot less pressure. Some cons are that you can't really get as dark. Maybe if you get a 6B one, um, because the standard one is HB, right, for schools. Um, but if a 6B one is in your arsenal, you might be able to get some darker colors. Another con is smudging. Um, these don't really last in sketchbooks. A bunch of my older sketchbooks use these and they just don't look, they just don't look right. I grew up with these, so, you know, absolutely no hate. Uh, I still always keep these around. Uh, and use them, but I think there are better options on this list. Erasable colored pencils. This one was very fun to use. I think that we all grew up with both color pencils and crayons, but crayons are, you know, a little bit too small for my hands. So color pencils are a good, you know, fit in between. Um, I thought this would also be fun to include to compare against the regular pencil. Um, and some pros are that there's a big selection of colors, you know, really wide selection um, to help you bring your masterpiece to life with a variety of colors. Also, these are made with wax as opposed to graphite. So that has a ton of benefits in and of itself, such as it doesn't smudge on your hands nor on the page. Um, you could get really nice gradients if you really work in that wax. These are also pretty cheap. These are just Crayola and I think they work wonders. You could also spend a good amount of money on some more expensive ones that are a little bit better. These get the job done if you don't want to do that. Some cons are is that you constantly have to keep these sharpened to get really nice lines. This was a little annoying while I was drawing. I had to just always keep that in mind. And my hands started to hurt um, because of how sort of difficult it is to, to really lay the wax on there. This could be a fault of just the specific brand that I was using, but it was a little bit difficult. So if you're really trying to dial those in, if you like getting really dark colors, this might not be the one for you. Next up is this Micron, or just ink pens in general that are not ballpoint pens. I usually use these with a pencil, but I thought it'd be cool to, you know, draw this on their own. Um, this isn't my most successful drawing, so please don't judge me too hard. I also wanted to mention that this specific type of tip is nice because you could get a good range of thicknesses and good, you know, different qualities to draw with. I definitely figured out uh, during this sketching that this is very, this is for a very specific style, you know, more so uh, bold, um, I guess comic booky, uh, and you sort of had to draw with values, not necessarily lines like what I did with with the cat. And I figured this out with the characters and the in the graffiti on the side. I very much went for specific features and just bold outlines. Some of the pros with this is that it's pretty versatile. You get really skinny lines and really thick ones, and you could also get very dark because this ink gets very dark. A pro slash con is that there's no erasing, but I'll explain this with the other pen on this list. And the cons are that this is uh, pretty difficult to do realism with, especially if you're on the go and moving a lot. But before you come at me in the comments, I just wanna say realism is possible, but it's just a lot more difficult than the other mediums on this list. You also waste a good amount of ink with this pen. So if you've ever used a Micron, you know how quickly these empty out. So you'll always need a backup of these and that can get a little pricey. Um, and in general, these are you know more expensive. I know there are some cheaper alternatives, uh, like I found a whole pack at CVS for pretty cheap. Um, but if you want these nice quality ones, you're gonna have to, you know, shell out a good amount. So yeah, on to the next one, the ballpoint pen. I chose a blue one, you could also choose the black one. I've seen purple ones, there's a bunch of different colors. And I'm a little bit biased because this is my bread of butter. I always have these around uh, with my sketchbooks, always ready to draw. The pros that I love about these is that they're super cheap. You could get these for like 30 cents, 40 cents each. Uh, if you buy a pack, bigger packs make them even cheaper. Um, you could get really light lines with these if you just draw really softly. So you could essentially sketch with these. Like if you use the pens in the other one, you kind of need the graphite to sketch. But with these, you could just sketch with really light lines. But then you could also get really deep colors. If you really fill it in and, and you know, as I'm doing with, with some of this background, I'm really trying to fill it in. So it's easy to do that as well. Also, cross hatching is a fun effect that you could accomplish with this. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially creating hash marks around the page in order to get different values. And it's a cool effect to, to achieve. So the pro slash con that I also mentioned for the other pen was that you're not able to erase. Now, some people see this as a con because they always wanna erase their work and be able to perfect it. But I see this as a, as a pro because sometimes we get so bogged down 
on if something doesn't look right but when you're sketching you're just trying to sketch right you're just trying to get your your idea on the page you're if you're on the go if you're waiting for a flight you're just trying to put some ink on there right and having the ability to erase is sometimes an Achilles heel because you're thinking about erasing and then you're going to be more inclined to do it and you're more inclined to, you know, perfect it. When if you have the pen, it's like once that mark is on there, it's on there and you cannot go back. And you focus more on quantity, right? Doing more and more sketches as opposed to getting it right, which I think can be very beneficial if you're just starting out or, if, you know, you're you're a pro at this. Some cons are sometimes this can smudge, uh, especially if you're if you don't let it dry. If you move your hand on it, it could you know mark the page. Another one is that it doesn't necessarily bleed, but uh, the hand marks can show up on the other page. And what I mean by that is that if you press it too hard, sometimes the the tip of the pen is so strong that it indents onto the page. Sometimes even make a hole depending on the surface that you're drawing on. So yeah, 